Okay, so for this question, it says calculate the reactions at A and B. You can see in this question, we have a point load, which is 20 kilonewtons acting downwards at the end of the beam. And we also have a uniformly distributed load, which is 15 kilonewtons per meter acting only three meters of the beam. We have our reaction B and also our reaction A. And these are what we need to calculate. So before we construct our free body diagram, let's convert this uniformly distributed load, which is 15 kilonewton per meter, into a point load similar to the 20 kilonewton. So we simply do that by saying 15 kilonewton per meter times, and it's distributed only in three meters of the beam. So we say three meters, so it's 15 kilonewton per meter times three meters, and that's gonna give 45 kilonewton. And note that this 45 kilonewton acts directly in the center, directly in the center of the three meters it's acting. So that's gonna be approximately around this point. So that's gonna be the center, as I said. So the center of this will be, we divide three into two, and that's gonna give 1.5 meters. So let's assume this is the center. 1.5 meters, 1.5 meters. So we need this in order to construct our free body diagram. So free body diagram. So let's begin. So we know that towards the left side, we actually have a reaction. So this is, this is A. We have a reaction at A in the y direction because this, this is acting upwards in a vertical direction. We also have the reaction at B, which is approximately around this distance, reaction B in the y direction. And this is, let's see, this is two meters away from the 20 kilonewton. So there's a 20 kilonewton force acting towards the end of the beam. And this is two meters away. So two meters away. Now, as we said, we just converted this uniformly distributed load into a point load. And this acts directly in the center, in the center of the three meters. So that's gonna be so if this is B, this is B, let's assume that this is the center of the three meters, that is 1.5 meters away. So this is 1.5 and we said it's 45 kilonewton. There's nothing else and this distance from here to here now it will be the four meters plus 1.5, which gives 5.5 meters. So from A towards the 45 kilonewton that's acting downwards, it's going to be 5.5 meters. So we basically have our free body diagram here. Are we missing anything? No, we have everything we need. So let's first state that <clears throat> that upwards, all the forces upwards, we will consider positive and all the forces downwards, we will consider negative. Uh, any clockwise moments, we will consider positive and anti-clockwise, let's consider negative, okay? So we wanna take note of that before we actually begin our calculation. So let's go with, a green color. So let's begin. So let's start by taking, taking moments at point, point A in fact. So we're taking moments at A. So if we take moments at A, we can see that we have a 45 kilonewton force acting downwards 
And as mentioned, we said we are taking downwards force, swallow downward force as negative. So that's going to be open brackets, negative 45 since it's acting downwards times and a distance from the 45 kilonewton force to A is 5.5 meters times 5.5 meters plus. So we have, let's look again, we have a reaction B. Now notice that this is acting upwards. And we said that upwards, we will take as positive. So open brackets, RB times, and a distance again from A to RB is 5.5 plus 1.5. Okay, so it's 5.5 plus 1.5. That's gonna give, seven meters plus and again we have the 20 kilonewton force acting downwards towards the end of the beam here and downwards will be negative so negative 20 times the distance from the 20 kilonewton to a is 5.5 5.5 plus the 1.5 plus two meters, and that's gonna give nine meters, nine meters equals zero because there's nothing towards the left side. We considered everything towards the right side. Okay, so we can now simplify this. So negative 45 times 5.5, that will be negative 247.5 plus RB times seven, that's seven RB. Negative 20 times nine, that's gonna be negative 180 equals zero. We can simplify this even further, equals three, carry across, carry across these numbers. It's gonna be 247.5 plus 180. So that will give us RB equals to 274.5 plus 180 divided by seven RB equals, so 247.5 plus 180, that's 427.5 divided by seven. So we get therefore RB is equals to 427.5 divided by seven, that's gonna be 61.07 kilo newton. So we have found RB or reaction on B. Okay, so let's use a different color. So since we have found RB, now we can find RA. Now we know that the sum, sum of the forces upwards is equals to the sum of the forces downwards. If we look at all of the forces that's acting upwards, we have RA and RB. That's the two reactions. So that's gonna be RA plus RB, since those are the only two forces acting upwards and the two forces acting downwards, as you can see, it's very obvious, 45 kilonewton acting downwards and the 20 kilonewton force is acting downwards as well. So the downward force is gonna be 45 kilonewton plus 20 kilonewton. Now notice that we just calculated RB, RB is, this 61.07. So we can substitute that and solve for RA. So RA plus 61.07 kilonewton equals 45 kilonewton plus 20 kilonewton. With that being said, we can say RA is equals to once we add 45 and 20, definitely get 65 kilonewton 
And if we take the 61.07 towards the next side, we'll get a negative 61.07 kilonewton. So therefore, Ra is simply 3.93 kilonewton. So these are our two answers.